Hey, what's happening guys? In this video, I want to cover how we can use Reframe to build a form. So let's get started. I'm cool again. The first thing I want to do is create a new Reframe project. So I'm going to go line new Reframe and I'm going to call the project Animal Form and I want to add the 10x debug tool to it. So that's using um, Reframe template. Cool, so then I wanna open this up in VS Code. So I'm gonna open it up in VS Code and then I wanna open the views.cljs file and start the REPL using Culver, build the app. Cool, it's gonna ask me what build to connect to. I'm gonna to connect to app. Once the build's completed, I'm gonna to go to localhost 8280 and I'm gonna pop out the 10x debug tool and everything looks like it's working fine. And I also want to include the Balma CSS library. Let's go and search for Balma CDN. And go here. And I'm going to include the RTL version. So I'm just going to copy this link and go back to my project to index.html. And underneath the title, I'm just going to copy that CDN link, save it. I also want to make a scratch.html file and move that to the side here. Go back to views.cljs, go back to our project, refresh this, and we'll see the font change, and that's how we know Bulma is working. And the reason I want to use Bulma is because I want to show how easy it is to convert um, HTML into hiccup syntax. So if we go back to Bulma, I'm going to go to Form, General, copy out a normal text input element. So I'm going to go here and copy that into my scratch. Go back, and then I also want to include a select box. Here has a select box. So I'm going to copy this and also put it here. Right, so let's now convert these two elements into hiccup elements. So I'm gonna create a text input component, so text input, and that's gonna return a div with the class of field. And inside of that div, we're gonna have a label element with the class of label. It has the, the text name in it, which I'm just gonna include. Underneath that label, you have a div, with the class of control. Inside of that div, we have an input element with the class of input, and it will have the attribute type with the value text and the attribute placeholder with the value of text input. Save this, and that is this HTML as hiccup. So let's also create a select box. So I'm gonna define select input and that's going to have the div with the class of field so i can actually just write field here and press tab and it will give me a div element with the class of field and inside of this div we have a label element with the class of label and here it just says subject underneath that we have a div with the class of control inside of that a div with the class of select then inside of that div, we have a select. We have two options. So option, and the first one is select drop down. And underneath that, we have another one with, with options. Cool, so let's include that in our main panel. So I'm just gonna remove this H1 element and then add our text input as a component with the square brackets. And then underneath that, our select input. And if we go back to our web page, we go back to animal form, we should see those two. And I wanna actually also just give the surrounding div a class of section, and that will add some margin. So we now have our two form elements. I also actually just wanna add a button here. So I'm gonna create an element type button with the class of button, and it will have the text of save. Cool, it's added. Let's also add the class of is primary to give it a color. I think we're good, we don't need Balma anymore. So I'm just gonna close this Balma tab and delete the scratch. Okay, so now we have our inputs on the screen. Let's also look at creating our two-way binding with data. So I wanna use the onChange event handler to populate um, data inside of our local state. And then I wanna associate using a subscription that local state value with the value of the input. So let's do that with our text input. I'm gonna create an onChange event handler here. And what this is gonna do is, actually before we do it, I'm just gonna include my events namespace at the top. So animal form.events as events. 
before we use this on change event, let's actually make it. So underneath our initialize DB event, I'm going to register a new event. So reframe forward slash reg event DB. And I'm going to call this event update form. And what's going to happen here is we're going to take a function which takes in our database as well as the event we're passing through. So we'll be passing through a vector. So I'm going to destructure it here. We're going to ignore the first value, which will be the name of the event. Then the second value will be the ID of the field we're updating and then the value of that input element. So I'm going to associate in our database. I'm going to pass through a key of form and then the ID of the element and then the value of the element. And that's what our event will do. So associate in basically takes a map and then we can pass through a vector of keys. So let's say key one and key two, and then let's pass through a value of val. And if we execute this, we return a map where inside of key one, we have um, a map with a key of key two and we associate the value of key two with val. And that's associate. So let's go back to our views.cljs and let's use that event that we just created. So I'm going to go reframe forward slash. Well, this has to be an anonymous function. So we just put a, a pound sign here and then we dispatch and the dispatch function takes in a vector. The first key is our event name. So events forward slash update form. Then we need an ID and I'm actually going to pass through the ID to this component and let's give this uh, input input uh, ID of animal name and then we need to grab the value so I'm going to write this out first and then explain it in essence what's happening here is the onChange event is a function which gets the event passed through the nonce function um, automatically gives us the first argument as this percentage sign then we're threading that to dot target so we're getting the target from that and then we're getting the value in essence what this is if you know JavaScript is a function like this let's say on change and we get the event and then what we're doing is we're returning e dot target dot value and that's what this is doing here so we use the dot hyphen to indicate a property and if we didn't have that it would if we just had the dot it would run this as a function so if we just had like this which is obviously not right so let's take that up and I hope that made sense. Let's save this. And now if we go back to our application and we write in here, we'll see that we have a key of a form inside of our database now. And then it binds that input text to a key animal name in our local state. So now let's actually also associate the value of that input field with this value. So we can create a subscription here. Let's create a subscription to that value. We'll call it value. And we're gonna use reframe. And we're going to subscribe to subs, let's say form. And we're going to pass through the ID here also. And let's just put this in our let binding. And then we're going to associate value with value from our subscription. So let's create this subscription now. So I'm going to go to subs.cljs and we're going to register a new subscription. So reframe reg sub. We're going to subscribe to form and that also takes in a function where the first argument is the database and then the second argument is this vector that we're passing through to subscribe so we don't need the first argument which is the name of the subscription but we do need the id that we want to subscribe to and then what we can do is we can get in our database get in the form map we want the id and this will return us the value we're looking for. So if we go back here, we can see we're getting an object object and that's because we're not dereferencing the value. So let's dereference the value with the at symbol. Now we have our two-way binding. Cool, so I also wanna just pass through the label to our component. So we're gonna update that with label, label, and I'm gonna give this the label of animal name. Now let's do our select input. So before we start with that, I'm gonna make some select options. So I'm gonna def, animal types because I want to select the animal type here and it's just going to be dog cat and mouse let's also preempting let's add an id to this select input I'm going to say animal type as the id and then we'll give it the label of animal type and I also want to pass through the options which will be give us plural animal types 
So our select input will then take in an ID, a label, and options. So let's replace this label with label. So I also want to do the same thing here with the on change and value to create the two-way binding. So I'm just going to copy this let binding here and add a bracket. And then the select is going to have a value of our dereference value. And then we also need to add the on change event handler. So I'm just going to copy this here. And if we save this, we should have something working. So we go back here and we just update our dropdown. Yeah, we can see our animal type is updating here. Cool. So instead of using these options, I want to map over these options and create new options. I'm going to get rid of these guys and then map over options and then map takes in a function. So the function will then take our option and then we want to return some new hiccup, a new element with option and the value option. And then I want to add the key attribute here of O because that should be unique. And then I want to add the value and the value will be O. So I also want to add in a default option. I'm going to add an option element and it's going to have the text of please select and its attributes will be value blank because that'll be the default when nothing is selected. So if we save this, we should see our options update, please select. And if we update these, it'll work. And then please select, it will change that to blank. Cool. So we're nearly there. So what I want to do is make this primary save button when we click it, add our data to like an animals list. We'll add an on click event handler here. And this will be an anonymous function where we dispatch an event. So reframe forward slash dispatch. And that takes in a vector with the event name first. So let's events, let's call this um, save form. So let's create the save form event. So if we go to events, and I'm just going to copy this previous event, and I'm going to call this one save form, get rid of this association. And I want to create a let binding here. So I want the form data. So form data that will be if we get from our DB, we want the form. We can actually also do it like this. We just go form out of DB. Then we want our current data, which we'll add our form data to. So I'm just our animal list. So we'll just call it animals. And that'll just be a list in our DB called animals. And we'll get that out of DB. But actually now I want to use get because if we get from our DB animals, we can provide a default value, which I want to be an empty vector. And then inside of the left binding, I want to add our form data to this animals vector. So I'm going to create a binding here called updated animals. And what we're going to do is we're going to conjoin to our animals vector, the form data. So then I want to associate a key animals with our updated animals. So I'm going to use a search inside of our DB, the key animals with updated animals. And this doesn't need the second argument save. And if we go back to our application and we now create an animal name Toto and we make it a dog and save it. We see a new key animals and inside of that we have a vector of animals. So if we save this again, yeah, we'll just we just see we're adding to the list of animals. So I also want to just empty this form once we click save. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this database associate here. So we run this associate and it's gonna thread the db as the first argument so we don't need to pass it through here. And then underneath here I want to dissociate form from our database. Save this and now when we update this, it'll clear our database. So what's happening here is this select box isn't resetting and that's because we're returning null, not an empty string, which is what we require here for our default selection. So to update that, we just go to our subs.cljs and then we can pass through a default value for get in. And if we don't find a value, it's just an empty string. So save this. Now, if we like make save again, so it'll say Toto and it'll save. Yeah, it resets the form. Well, it doesn't reset the form, it basically just removes the form key from our database. Right now, we can now click save and we have null values saving to our database. So we don't have a valid form. So I wanna make a subscription to check if the form is valid and if it's not valid, we want to disable this button. 
So inside of our let binding in the main panel, I'm going to create a variable here called is valid. And we're going to subscribe to subs form is valid. Here we're going to use that value. We're going to say this button will have the property of disabled. If not, this form is valid. Uh, let's also, I mean, this needs to come from the subs namespace. I'll, I want to just pass the IDs that we need in this form is valid subscription. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass through a vector here and I'm going to add the IDs of our inputs. So I'm going to say animal name and then also animal type. And this form is valid is going to check whether these IDs exist in our form field. So I'm going to go to our subscriptions and create this subscription. So here I'm going to register a new subscription. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one. And I'm going to give this the name form is valid. And it's not going to take the ID. What it's going to do is it's going to take the form IDs. So what the subscription is going to do is it's going to loop over our form IDs that we pass through and we're going to check that those keys have values in our form. And we can do that using a closure function called every. So we're going to run over every. That takes in a predicate function, which we will create just now, and the vector we want to loop over, so form IDs. So then what we can do is we can say get in form, and we want the ID, which will be our represented by this percentage sign and we need to actually get in our db. So that will check whether that value exists in our db. If all the values exist, then our form is valid. So we go back to views and everything here should work. We just need to actually dereference this subscription and let's check if that works. So here, I'm just going to... Okay, so this should be working. I'm just going to check why not. Okay, it's because I have a typo here, so we want to add the disabled attribute, not diabled. And now we can't save this when our form is not valid, but if we create a name, let's say Milo, and Milo is a cat, we can save. So while editing my video, I realized it, we didn't have a display for the data that we're saving on the form, so I'm just going to quickly make one. Uh, I'm going to go to subscriptions, and I'm going to subscribe to our animals key and our DB. So let's go reframe, register sub, and I'm going to call this animals and that's going to take in a function where the first argument is our database and i'm just going to return get uh, from the db we're going to get the animals key and if that doesn't exist we're just going to return an empty vector i'm going to go back to our views and i'm going to make a new component here called animal list i'm going to make a let binding here where we bind that animal subscription to a variable called animals and that subscription is going to be dereferenced here and let's get reframe subscribe and this takes in a vector and we point it to our animal subscription then I want to create a div here and inside of that div I want an h1 heading called animal list and underneath that we'll have a ul element and here we will map over our animals that takes in a function. So now our animal is an object where we have an animal type and an animal name. So I'm actually just going to destructure those here. So we can say keys and we'll have animal type and animal name. And here we can return an li. Here we're going to render out a string where we'll say the animal name, face, well, in brackets, we can put the animal type. And this also needs a key attribute, which we can just make uh, the animal name. Save this, and let's also just render out this list in our main panel. So I'll add animal list here. Cool, so we can see our animal list is rendering. So if we refresh this, we'll just see Animal list is blank. Let's add a new animal. Let's say Craig and Craig is a mouse. Save it. And now we add into the list. And that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on forms. I got lots and lots of videos coming up. So stay tuned. Cheers.